Well, this will either be a super interesting project or it will be the quickest way to waste $500. Stick around. Let's take a look at this. So a few days ago, I shot my unboxing video for this frame set. It is a four frame set from directly from China, from a company called Velo Build. Uh, it's a basically a Dogma F from Pinarello knockoff. Uh, thankfully, they don't actually show that on the frame set or anything. I did shoot a unboxing video two days ago. That's actually what was going to be this episode, and I'm going to show you that. Um, in, in a bit that episode as I shot it but I had a chance to build a bike yesterday and felt that I needed to come on before the unboxing and just sort of a share with you now mind you I didn't get any hookup discount or free shipping or anything from this company uh, my experience is basically as if you, what, what would happen if you were to go buy one yourself so there was no special treatment and as always and then, um, you know, so the product that's received is a product that's received. There was no like a hand picking going on or anything. Not that I'm such an influential YouTuber where they would have to extend such a thing. So as always, I'm just sharing with you my unbiased look into things and I'm gonna give it to you as is, as you would come here to expect. So when you buy, uh, when you buy frame sets from China, to me, there are three tiers. So the first tier would be the ones where they are produced in China. It is using open mold. So they're just going to be very generic. Uh, normally, they won't carry any uh, brand names. Or they're going to carry some China Chinese uh, brands that you've never heard of just so that they have something slapped on the down tube. So that would be tier one. You could get them for anywhere from 350 to 550 or so on what you would normally buy from AliExpress. Then there's a second tier, which would be slightly more premium, right? And these would be like the ones like Elvez, Windspace, which actually costs quite a bit. It's all well north of a thousand dollars for the frame set. And then things like a Yoleo. So these are all like higher quality and they have their own like spin on the frames and whatever. And these normally have a very positive reviews by people that ride them. Actually, one of my friends ride a Windspace, another friend rides a Yoleo. Great. Then there are, there's a, the third and final tier to me, which is just a straight knockoffs. So these are the ones where they just unapologetically, they just rip off the very famous popular frames, such as Dogma F, Specialized the Tarmac, you know, stuff, stuff like that. So um, these, you know, it's a just a blatant knockoff. I'm not going to condone or support these organizations that do such a thing and especially the ones that actually come with the stamped logo on there as if it's the real deal. And um, in some way, I believe in America, if you resell something that is a counterfeit, um, knowing that it is a counterfeit to someone, I believe that's illegal actually. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. So anyhow, why am I telling you all this? I am going to share with you through, I'm going to make like a two, three, four videos throughout. Uh, today, you're going to watch unboxing. You're going to see whether you need to run out and get one of these for $4.99 because it being such a great deal, or I may advise you to keep $500 in your pocket. So, preliminary, the spoiler alert, preliminary verdict will come at the end of this episode, so stay tuned. Stick around, find out. Let's now watch my unboxing video. Hello everyone, how are you? This is your Shirley Diabetic Cycling coming at you once again. A little bit of a different backdrop here today. 
All right, so I am going to show you something. I'm going to take you from the, um, the part where I'm actually unboxing it. So I ordered this uh, frame set and with the cockpit included, all one piece integrated handlebar included with the frame. It was at $4.99 Then I paid a little bit of shipping to get it over here. Just arrived from China, so I'm gonna actually take you uh, how the box arrived. I'm gonna show you as I unpack the box, how it arrives in the event when you are interested in ordering one of these, you sort of know going in what it looks like. So it's like my way of uh, doing a little bit of service to the public over there. So you guys know what you're getting, whereas I have no idea what's how this is going to come out. So let's take a look together. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. The uh, exterior tape job is a little bit uh, questionable. And inside the box, so my camera is on a tripod and I don't want to move it. So I'm just going to lift the box to show you how this came. So basically, it came like that. So inside of a cardboard box, the frame is just wrapped in a very rudimentary bubble wrap with the uh, in one piece integrated bar just wrapped as such. I mean, this really screams China. This is, uh, I ha if you remember my normal usual backdrop of my videos, you see a whole bunch of guitars, right? So um, it's obviously pretty obvious that I'm a heavily into guitars and um, I actually have another channel. There was one time I bought a fake uh, brand name, name brand. Um, I bought a Gibson Les Paul lookalike from a China factory. And um, so to give you a reference, the Gibson Les Paul Supreme, if you buy the real deal, it's like over $4,000, close 5,000. China company on AliExpress, um, you could get a knockoff China made for about 160. I bought one. It turned out to be a absolute straight up garbage. I'm hoping this is not at that level. However, the reason why I mentioned that is basically the packaging is very similar to how this is looking so far. It's a, this type of a very basic protection with a, that type of a bubble wrap. So let's keep uh, looking at this. Okay. For the uh, speed sake of this uh, presentation, I am going to just dump all the material on the ground for now and then I'll clean that up later. I can tell already the raw carbon finish is definitely showing the, like the fingerprints of the handler. So whoever wrapped this at the factory or warehouse, you could see that guy's um, you can see that guy's like a handprint. It's not like a cleanly finished. I'm gonna pause real quick to get a scale and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We're back with the trusty uh, scale of truth from Park Tool. All right, so this is a one piece integrated handlebar. So it has the stem and the, um, the bar combination and it's coming in at I don't know if the camera is going to show that. It's a 14 ounce equivalent of 0.4 kilograms, so 400 uh, grams. Um, let me inspect this uh, and show it to you and inspect a little bit further. So those of you with an eagle eye probably noticed this is the... Um, most talent ultra bar from Pinarello. Um, now I do have this exact the same, I, I do have the real deal of this uh, integrated cockpit on my Pinarello prints. So um, for this particular thing from China, I ordered 100 on the stem and then 40 on the width of the bar. Now remember, Pinarello does their sizing a little different, so you have to order 42 to get 40, right? 
Now, I did not know whether the knockoff is gonna follow that exact same sizing, so I ordered just straight of 40 centimeter. Um, I'm gonna have to compare this against my actual Pinarello and see if the width is, you know, where this is landing, whether it's gonna uh, be true 40 or if I should have ordered uh, 42. But right now, <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you something right now, you guys. The way, remember, I have the real deal of this. By the way, the real deal of this alone is $1,000 when you buy um, the real thing. Now, when I look at this, the profile of the tubing is exactly like that of my actual Pinarello Most Ultra. It's looking actually pretty um, dead on so far because it has a very um, unique contour, especially in the drops about yay here and it kind of very it, it tapers towards the uh, where the shifters will be mounted and that feels actually pretty damn close to the real deal so wow it's going to be interesting so that's the cockpit you guys so let's uh move to the rest of this uh thing here and see what we got Okay, this obviously is going to be the fork. Let's take a look at what we have. By the way, the bike that you see in the background right here, that's my Factor Austro. Alright, so I'm just uh, inspecting the... Um, Fork. It's a raw black matte finish carbon look. Um, it's uh, <laughs> definitely asymmetric like the actual real Pinarello would be. Now what they did right, and when I say they, it's the, uh, the China factory where they fabricated uh, this whole thing. What they did well, I must say, is they did not put Pinarello branding on the product, which I actually like, because if it's not Pinarello, you should not have a Pinarello logo. Copying the, um, the tube shaping and all that, that's one thing, but if you actually put the um, branding on there, that's pretty, uh, that's not cool. Although I think that I, they actually did that on one of the components which I'll show you later so let's uh, this looks pretty pretty reasonable all right to measure this I'm gonna go ahead uh, to uh, weigh the um, find out the weight of the fork I am gonna take the um, the skewer off the the, the through axle so uh, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna come right back and uh, measure this so a little bit of a clarification, you guys. I actually, I'm not a weight weenie. I don't really care about the weight, especially when you're dealing with a somewhat of a uh, knockoff product. Um, but the reason why I'm measuring this and showing you the numbers is because for those of you that are familiar, I want you, I want you to see the weight uh, compared to the real deal to see how close or far from the real deal this is. So this is a fork with the uh, steer tube completely intact without cut. Comes in at 0 0.08 kilograms and that comes out at one pound one ounce. I don't know if the scale reading is visible in the uh, camera. There you go. So fork alone is um, one point, so basically one pound. I mean it feels solid it, it looks it feels like it's made really well you guys so far not bad so um those of you familiar with the pinarello on the fork you know about this uh flap right here so the flap looks pretty legit the um 
where the through axle adapter would go to that appears to be milled pretty well out of the factory that looks really good okay let's move on to what else what's, the, what, what's in here what else is in here so there's the actual frame and then the box is empty so we'll push that aside all right the packing absolutely horrendous it's just uh, that white material on top and then uh, just one layer of very small bubble wrap. Oh, I see a little thing where the uh, hardware stuff is. So let's take a look at that first. It looks like I got some hardware and the C-post. So we'll take a look at this real quick. And then we'll take a look at the... <sighs> Take a look at the seat post first, you guys. Okay, so for all intensive purpose, this should be the same seat post that I have on my Pinarello prints. Just uh, also, it comes in the uh, raw matte finish carbon look. It's uh, arrow uh, has the setback. I don't remember if there was an option to order the seat post without the setback. Um, I mean, for me, I was going I would need the seat back, uh, the the setback anyway. So, so that's good. The metal part looks all right. I mean, that looks pretty legit as far as a clamp is concerned. I don't see any uh, possible degradation in quality because of it not being legit product C post is solid you guys but it feels pretty heavy I mean I don't know if that's just uh, my hold on so we're gonna weigh this thing and see uh, what the weight comes in at so C post alone 0.08 ounce. I don't know. Again, if the camera doesn't show the readout, I apologize. So that is 0.24 kilograms, 240 grams. I don't know if in the world of C post, I don't know if that's a heavy C post or a light C post. I don't know. But there you go. C post looks solid. Again, I actually like the fact that there is no branding on any of these components saying that it's a Pinarello because it's not Pinarello, so you should not have a label on there that says Pinarello. Now let's take a look at this uh, super iffy looking package. Let's see what else is on here, in here. Now, uh, I'm going to be upfront and honest with you. I don't watch review videos for any item that I'm going to end up reviewing because I don't want my thoughts and opinions to be clouded by someone else. This is a review. But uh, this here, I did see a couple of videos dealing with this particular frame set because um, I also needed some assurance before I... Uh, shell out $500 so I did see some um, other reviews and um, so that's how I'm uh, familiar with some of the things that's in here so here's a dust cap it's a plastic affair uh, looks the shape wise it looks very similar to the real deal from uh, Pinarello most Um, I don't know if the real deal uses a better quality plastic, but there's the top of the dust cap. I mean, you could, you, you could tell Chinese, China, basically based on this uh, rough looking packaging job that they did. A couple things fell on the ground. That's not good. Let's pick that up. We got washer. We got some kind of a screw. I don't know what the hell that is. Okay, I see what's going on, you guys. So, let me just collect all this together. Safely 
keep that. I hope my mechanic could figure out what the hell all this is because there are some parts in here that I have no clue what these are. But here's what I uh, can make out. So I can see that they gave you. So this piece comes together with this piece creating a spacer. So it's going to create a stack of a cockpit as a spacer here. That's very cheap feeling plastic. I bet, again, I've never seen a Pinarello Mosta spacer because at the factory I had uh, the dealer, not the factory, <clears throat> at the dealer I had them uh, slam my cockpit for me. So this here, I don't, I've never seen one, the real legit Pinarello spacer. So I don't know if this is close to it, but this seems really cheap. The plastic seems really, really, really cheap. And the molding from the factory must be super rough because you could see just, just how terrible it looks. Probably isn't going to be a problem for me because I'm not going to use any of these because uh, the cockpit will be completely slammed. And then here's the um, piece that's going to sit on top of the dust cap basically where all the cables, are, uh, the integrated cables will end up uh, basically going through here, coming to the head tube to go down the uh, down tube. So that's what that is. And then this is the part that's going to bother me when I have the bike assembled. I might actually order something else to not use this. So this is the uh, top cap. Normally your top cap would be just a round circular thing. Whether, you, whether it's FSA, usually you're going to get something that's branded with the bike builder that you are ordering from. I don't know if that's showing on the camera, but basically the reason why I'm showing you is because there is Pinarello logo right on the top cap. Remember, this is not a Pinarello. This is Pinarello knockoff from China. Now, Having seen the real deal, because this is the exact same shape, teardrop shape top cap that I have on my Pinarello prints, and that logo P, that is looking absolutely janky. That is, they did not do a very good job with that. And if you were gonna butcher it like here, you might as well not have put the logo on there. Um, so this is hideous and not very cool on a lot of different, you know, on so many different level. I don't really care for that there. Now, headset comes in this uh, box, very generic looking. There is no branding, there is no specification. Here's the uh, top cap plug thing that uh, expands to uh, get the headset to headset in the, uh, with the bearings and everything. Okay, so here are the bearings. Now, what I don't know also is the quality of these bearings. Um, <coughs> we'll find out, I guess. <coughs> Thankfully, the build itself is going to be done by my mechanic, not me. So, and that's, I also uh, like that because my mechanic who is more experienced with uh, build and, you know, components and such will have a much better feedback and idea about whether something is built properly and whatnot. So we'll go through that process and I'll film that process. <clears throat> my mechanic agreed to be filmed and help me with the inspection and the build of the whole thing <clears throat> now from some of the videos that i have seen online a bunch of people that bought this uh, and or different frame set by this particular company they do say um, there they had some issues with the headset there is some play in the headset so i don't know how that's gonna work out with this that I have. Now, if this whole unpacking process is boring you, I am very sorry, but I'm doing this on purpose so you guys can all see how this comes. Now, 
It is a knockoff, something that I thought I would never buy and ride, but I'm purely do, doing this for the actual content on the channel. Um, I do plan to ride it and uh, do a full review for you guys like I normally do. That said, eh. hold on. Now, so that said, I don't turn my nose up in the you know and be a complete snooty asshole elitist by saying, "Well, it's a China, you should ride it." Well, I mean, what if your budget is not as high as others, and this is um, you know the best your money can do? Then you know, then that's what it is, right? So I'm not gonna sit here and criticize someone getting a cheap China frame or whatever. So, you know, that's not the uh, purpose of my um, review. That's not the purpose of why I'm doing this. So, so again, it's for uh, people that's going to buy one of these. I want you to know what you're getting into. So I'm going to do a little bit of a public service and uh, be the guinea pig for you. All right, so I am almost done getting this thing unwrapped and I'm just rambling on so that, um, you know, there is a somewhat of an audio to this entire clip while I'm undoing this wrapping okay so once I get this unwrapped what I'm gonna do is get the um, through axle adapter off the frame to give you the weight all right so I'm gonna pause the video I'm gonna pause the camera no actually yeah I'm gonna pause the camera I'm gonna undo the um, through axle adapter and I'll come back with the scale and just like that, we are back. All right, so I am actually so relieved that the, um, the through axle adapter, both for the rear and the front, they line up so well. Um, that is a big plus. Um, looking pretty good. Uh, the derailleur hanger, I don't know why that is shaky. That shouldn't be. There shouldn't be a play like that, so I don't know what that is. I'm hoping that is just something that uh, is resolved by tightening the screw, which is this right here, maybe. Okay, so uh, you got your hole right here for the DI2 cable to come out of. Um, you got the uh, holes milled out right here from the factory for the uh, disc brake caliper. Um, you're inevitably you are going to have some finish problem um, with the way camera and the lighting is I don't think you're gonna see it but the around the bottom bracket area you there could have been a little bit of better finish however that is not a problem even on a legit uh, product because basically this area is gonna be all covered up with your crank and what have you so little you know, unfinished part in paint isn't going to be that big of a problem. My concern at the moment is whether the bottom bracket, uh, it's a threaded uh, bottom bracket by the way, whether the bottom bracket, once the bracket goes in, the, once the crank arm goes in, whether there's going to be a play, whether it's going to be flush and snug, that I do not know yet. Now, as far as the frame, let's get the weight of the frame out of the way. All right, so first we're gonna do kilograms and I am gonna try to show the numbers on the scale. Okay, what did it come out at? So 1.22 kilograms, which is two pounds and 11 ounces. So, two pounds and 11 ounces. Hmm. I'm just uh, checking for any imperfection, any sort of a uh, problem, crack. The mold looks good. So where, you know, where they got the mold from, I don't know. I don't know if the mold, it, the tube shaping is the same as the actual Dogma F.
on branded, just a black raw matte finish carbon. I don't know, that looks, <laughs> that looks pretty legit. I mean, I, when I say legit, I don't mean it's, it could be the real deal. I say legit as in, think of it as, it, as a, just a standalone product. Uh, don't, not thinking about what it is trying to look like, what it is inspired by. Um, when you look at just a frame set as is, it looks pretty damn legit as in a bike frame, not a uh, Dogma F. So it looks pretty good. Um, it does do with the entire, um, down to how the Dogma does it, where it's a flat, where the bottle goes in, a truncated foil, cam tail design. Um, they even got the three, uh, the bolts on the C-tube, just like the Dogma does. It is asymmetric, um, which is a synonymous with a Pinarello. You got thinner chainstay on this side, whereas you have much beefier chainstay on this side for the uh, added force coming from the, let me get the camera to be right, added force coming from the braking over here. So that all looks pretty, um, pretty good, you guys. I mean, for $4.99, count me impressed. I mean, this is not bad for $4.99, whether it's gonna hold up, whether it's gonna ride, whether it will build well, okay, well or not, that I don't know. Um, but again, same thing. I mean, you're, you're dealing with, uh, you know, factory finish that is looking little iffy because you could see the handprints, fingerprints. Now, when you buy a real deal, um, you're buying something that's backed by the manufacturer, their R&D, their um, product guarantee and all that. Just because it looks like a dogma doesn't mean it's a dogma, right? Uh, because Pinarello spends their money on how the sheets of carbon will lay up the resin that's used to cure the frame the way it is that gives you the qual right quality as well as a uh, reduction in weight. Now, I don't know if the same thing went into this. I mean, one would think no, because it didn't come from Pinarello factory, but who knows, right? But right now it looks the part, um, to be honest with you, it's better than I thought it was gonna be. Um, the shaping looks definitely legit. So there you go, that's the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, I guess this is the end of this episode, is it? So what I'm gonna do is I am putting this together. Uh, my mechanic's gonna come over on Friday and put this together as a full bike. Whether it'll turn out to be a bike or bike look-alike object, we don't know that yet, but we are going to find out. So what's going to be paired with this is a uh, Ultegra 12-speed Di2, and um, I have a I have a saddle. I got, and then Mercury S5 wheels will go on here, so that will give it a very stealthy-looking, all black matte finish, nothing shiny, all just flat black murdered out look. So that's it, you guys. Hopefully the build will turn out okay. Next time you see me, well, actually, I don't know which app uh, order my videos will go out, but um, this, the story with this thing will go in multiple episodes, being next episode of this would be the, uh, the build process with my mechanic. So that's it, you guys. Until next time, you guys take care. I've been Diabetic Cycling. You've been awesome. Keep the rubber side down. Safe riding out there. Take care. All right, so I just finished editing the episode and I did promise how I was going to give you a preliminary verdict. The bike that you see right here, made with Chinarello Dogma F frame. Oh, Chinarello Fogma F frame. Okay, so the bike is basically currently not exactly rideable. Uh, there are some issues with the uh, alignment of the bottom bracket that's causing the crank set to be not as smooth when you would pedal. Um, 
I was discussing with my mechanic and I think it's basically robbing right around 10 to 15 watts. So when all the new bikes, when they come out, they promise you how you save a certain number of watts. This thing comes out of the factory with the built-in robbing of your power by about 10 to 15 uh, watts. Furthermore, there is a bit of an issue with the alignment of the brake calipers, uh, the holes where the calipers will be mounted to. The machining of those holes are less than ideal. So right now, I'm dealing with that as well because, um, uh, long story, I'm gonna have on another episode with the whole build anyways. So that is a preliminary verdict. I don't know yet, it's been raining, so I have not been able to ride it. So I'll come back to you with, uh, with my report. Normally I don't do bike review unless I put about 1,000 miles on one, but this here, I think I'm gonna come to you at about, once I put down about 500 miles, and um, <laughs> if it lasts until then, and then we'll see, and then I'll tell you my uh, thoughts, whether it's still reasonable for 500 or not even worth. So, there you go. See ya.